which one is more important, technique or singing with emotions? And so in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down this question together. And I'd also share a little roadmap on how you can navigate this. Hey everyone, welcome back to Singing Simply. My name is Ivan and on this show, we aim to demystify singing and help you learn to actually sing because, you know, I get it. Learning how to sing can feel confusing. There's so much information out there. How do you know what to actually do? And so if this sounds like it's up your lane, hit that subscribe, hit that follow button because every single Friday we'll be releasing a new episode like this. And so today's question actually came off Reddit. I was just browsing the subreddit of r slash singing and I just came across this question that I thought was really, really interesting. You know, is emotions more important or is technique more important to singing? And so I wanted to share my perspective on that today, tackle some misconceptions and also share a little roadmap for you as a singer. How does this actually apply to you? So the first thing I really want to tackle is this misconception, which is a lot of people will think that it's, or, you know, should I focus on technique or emotion? Should I focus on singing a song with powerful emotions or should I make sure I'm technically perfect? What I would encourage you is let's reframe that as an and question, which means how can I sing the song with great technique and have good emotions? How can I sing this song and make someone feel something and be able to hit every single note and be on pitch? Think of it like this. There are plenty of singers, you know, at the karaoke sessions. I know you might know a friend or two like that where, you know, they're, they're going for it. They're, they've got the emotions, they've got the feels and they're really singing their heart out, but they don't sound good. They're not on pitch. You know, they're not on time. They're kind of just borderline shouting, but they've got the emotions, right? They've got the feels. They've got all that going for them. Now, on the other hand, you've seen some singers who are technically amazing. They're on pitch, they've got beautiful vibrato, everything's going on, but they don't make you feel anything. And so then that performance also is not what it could be. And so this is why I want to encourage you to think of this question more as an and. How can we get great emotions, get people to feel things, and also deliver it with great technique? And I promise you there is a sweet spot for that. Now that we know that technique and emotions is a bit more of like an and question, you need them both. How do we actually apply this to our own journey of singing? Because here's the thing, you're all on a journey when it comes to singing. And whether you're a beginner, whether you're intermediate, or maybe you're advanced, there is a time and place to focus on them. You know, you don't want to be equally focusing on emotions and technique at every single point in time. And so I wanted to break down this journey when it comes to learning how to sing and share what you should be focusing on at each point in time. So let's talk about the journey of learning how to sing. So let's let's break into these three stages, beginner, intermediate, and more intermediate to advanced. So if you're just starting off with singing, you've just started learning how to sing, the most important thing for you at the moment to help you sound better is focus on the fundamentals. Focus on the fundamentals, which I've actually tackled this in another episode, means concepts that apply to most, if not all of your singing, you know, your pitch, your breath support, being able to get a clear focus sound, all of these ideas, right? All these concepts, they are gonna to apply to most, if not all of your singing. And so what this means is when you're practicing, you should be spending your time developing those concepts, you know, doing exercises, doing little workouts that are gonna help you get familiar with those coordinations. If you're not singing on a pitch, you gotta be working on that. If you're not able to sing and, you know, keep a steady stream of air, this is something you wanna work on as well. This is something you want to keep spending more time on. And this is important because, you know, when I'm working with some of my newer summer clients, some of them are starting from absolute scratch. They, they have zero idea of what it comes to singing. And what this means is when we're working together, a lot of times we might spend 80 to 90% of the session just getting them to build these fundamental skills, building these fundamental skills of being on pitch, you know, being able to move up and down the range a bit more efficiently, being able to get some good breath support, all of these are fundamentals that we work on. Now, does this mean that we don't tackle songs? Not at all. You know, I think there's always a time and place for singing and for song work, but you'll notice that the balance is skewed a bit more towards technique because once you can build those technical skills, then we can apply it to your songs. Think of exercises, think of those workouts. They're just very simplified melodies. So simple to the point where it allows your brain to process and understand these fundamentals so that when you come to a song again, when you focus back on the song, you have an easy chance of applying that. Because as you get better with these fundamentals, we then enter stage number two, which is more of like an intermediate level. 
Now, I personally would classify intermediates as those who have a strong grasp of the fundamentals. They they can sing on pitch. They're able to sustain a note. They're able to kind of do some basic maneuvers with their, their range. They kind of can go to different notes. This is where we would start to introduce even more song work. If you think of this balance between working on exercises versus, you know, the time that we have when it comes to singing, you notice it now shifts more and more to like a 50-50 you're going to be spending about 50% of your time doing your workout and then maybe about 50% of your time working on songs, working on songs and applying those concepts that you've learned. And this is something that I do for my clients as well. Once they reach more of like intermediate level, you'll notice that the routine or the, the workflow that we've got for our singing practice, it actually changes a bit. It goes more from, you know, like, you know, 80% technical work, 20% singing to more like a 50-50 kind of split. You're spending 50% of your time working on building your technique, making sure you're able to access all these different sounds and make it easy as possible, and then 50% applying it into a song. And so what this actually looks like is, you know, running through songs, you know, top to bottom, making sure that some of the details are right, making sure you can actually sing through a song without having to struggle for it, without, you know, straining on those high notes. This is why we now switch to more of like a 50-50% kind of balance. This is also where we'll start in to introduce more song delivery. Right? How do we start to get your audience to feel something? What are some of those things that we can do to get your audience to feel something? But notice, we had to do this after this initial beginner phase because you know you can get all expressive and you can get all emotional, but if you're not seeing on pitch, it's going to sound funny. If you're not able to sustain and actually last through that phrase and sing and deliver the phrase, you are not going to sound as good as you can. Because once you've done this, stage number three is more like an intermediate advanced level. Now, what this means is the balance, once again, has, has, has shifted. Maybe instead of a 50-50 kind of split where you're spending 50% of your time working through techniques, 50% of your time working through a song, it might actually shift more to like an 80-20. You know, 20% of your time working in technique, refining that, and then 80% of your time focusing more on songs. And one of the most important parts of this stage is building the skill of singing into the pocket. Because haven't you, haven't you noticed, you know, sometimes when you listen to a really, really awesome singer and they their voice just seems to blend in so well to the track. It's not abrasive. There's no parts that kind of randomly stick out to you. This kind of smoothness is what I kind of call singing into the pocket. Now, for those of us who don't have that skill yet, there is a process towards this. This is from experience because it's often when I'm composing, and in fact, I'm actually composing a new song called The Dragon's People. There was this part in this section where I was singing and you know I, I first came in it, it wasn't necessarily a hard phrase but i came in i sang and i tried to sing it as good technically as possible you know making sure i'm not straining making sure i'm hitting the right pitch and when i listened back to it i was like this doesn't sound right it sounds way too off it doesn't sound like it was in the pocket it was this kind of nice kind of soft intro and i came in strong it was strong and it stood out like a sore thumb and after doing 20 takes of that line and just making sure I go back and listen to each take and study and figure out how I can make it even better, you start to find this sweet spot of technique where you know, you're know you not straining, you're on pitch, and you've got good control, and also the emotional delivery, which is what sort of sounds, what sort of colors, what sort of feelings do I need to be portraying in order to make this fit into this pocket. And this comes back to this idea where it's not about or it's not technique or emotions, but it's technique and emotions. When you can combine them both, then you can find this really, really sweet spot where your voice just sits into your song. And this is something that I take my clients through all the time. Some of my more advanced students were now spending a lot of time just recording, you know, recording takes after take after take, and I'm guiding them through, you know, what are some colors that they can experiment? Should they go more breathy there? Should they go more strong? And also, you know, what should they be feeling? I guide them through all of this because I think this is the final piece of the puzzle. And frankly, this piece of the puzzle never ends. You keep focusing on that again and again and again. And as you keep doing this, your singing becomes better and better. And so hopefully this shares a bit of a glimpse on the journey as a singer. And if you're thinking, you know, should I be focusing on technique or focusing on emotion? There is a time and place for that, depending on where you are at in your journey. If you're starting off, focus more on the techniques, build the fundamentals, make sure you can actually sing on pitch. Then when you get to more of like an intermediate, it becomes more like a 50-50 split, making sure you can actually sing through songs top to bottom, and then also have the routine or the vocal exercises to keep building your voice. And then when you get to more of like a advanced kind of level, you then want to be focusing 80% of your time on really nailing those lines, getting them down pat where you got the emotions 
and you have the technique. And of course, you know, you still want to be improving your voice, figuring out how else you can grow, how else you can make your voice stronger or more controlled. But 80% of your time is going to be spent more on song work. And so hopefully this tackles this question of should we be focusing on technique or should we be focusing on emotions when it comes to singing? And remember team, you don't have to do this on your own. If you're feeling like you're stuck, if you're feeling like you're not sure where to go with your singing and you want to improve faster, I've got some links below on how you can get in contact with me and work with me. And apart from that team, remember, become your best self and I'll see you for our episode next Friday. Take care.